for its tolerance, but then how uh, to be interpreted. Uh, many Christians and many also persecuted in the Middle Ages or after that came to the Netherlands because of tolerance, but the tolerance might have been interpreted as letting go or a very passive way, um, just closing your eyes or not being interested. Um, I'm not sure that's the lesson you were uh, looking for. Um, I do think that a lot of um, the current situation in the Netherlands <coughs> is um, can be explained or understood um, by looking at the hi history. Of course, pillarization has helped very much. Um, it has been uh, uh, taught about at universities. It's a difficult thing to export. Uh, it's very pr particular, I think, to the Netherlands. Um, but it has some very interesting lessons where uh, the different groups were organized, organized themselves in different pillars and they kind of decided, more or less, to live peacefully in, in one country. Um, the pillars, they disappeared, um, which is causing other uh, problems currently in the Netherlands. But we still have a very strong tendency to connect, to, um, to make compromises to uh, sit together and, and talk and talk and maybe do nothing, as some people complain, but that talking in itself is a very important process. Um, let, let me leave it there, because there's so much to say about it. Um, the other issue, of course, democracy. Um, democracy is not only about voting. It's uh, part of culture, it's part of the people, it's part of the history. Um, and often democracy is understood now, oh, only voting and then majority, but it's much more complex than that. But I'm sure everybody's aware about it.